wine to all the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And so on this feast day of St. Mark, we prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, and we also ask, keep in mind the Mary Forte Hubble, for whom we are offering this Mass. So let us prepare ourselves, uh, calling to mind our sins, and we ask the Lord's pardon. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. And let us pray. O God, who raised up St. Mark, your evangelist, and endowed him with the grace to preach the gospel, grant, we pray, that we may so profit from his teaching as to follow faithfully in the footsteps of Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, clothe yourselves with humility in your dealings with one another, for God opposes the proud, but bestows favor on the humble. So humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your worries upon him, because he cares for you. Be, be sober and vigilant. Your opponent, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, steadfast in faith, knowing that your brothers and sisters throughout the world undergo the same sufferings. The God of all graces, who called you to his eternal glory through Christ Jesus, will bring will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you after you have suffered a little. To him be dominion forever. Amen. I write you this briefly through Sylvanus, whom I consider a faithful brother, exalting you and testifying that this is the true grace of God. Remain firm in it. The Chosen One at Babylon sends you greeting, as does Mark, my son. Greet one another with a loving kiss. Peace to all who are in Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to be to God. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord.
The favors of the Lord I will sing forever. Through all generations from my mouth shall complain, proclaim your faithfulness. For you have said, my kindness is established forever. In heaven you have confirmed your faithfulness. Forever, forever I will sing, sing the goodness, goodness of the Lord. The heavens proclaim your wonders, O Lord, and your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can rank with the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the sons of God? Forever, Forever I will sing, sing the goodness of the Lord. Blessed the people who know the joyful shout. In the light of your countenance, O Lord, they walk. At your name they rejoice all day, and through your justice they are exalted. Forever, Forever I, will I will sing the goodness, the goodness of, the of the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. We proclaim Christ crucified. He is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In the name they will, in my name, they will drive out demons, and they will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands, and if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. Then the Lord Jesus, after he spoke to them, was taken up into heaven, and he took his seat at the right hand of God. But they went forth and preached everywhere, while the Lord worked with them and confirmed the word through accompanying signs. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we're celebrating the feast day of St. Mark. Uh, and I think the psalm there that we just read, Psalm 89, our response was, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. Uh, this is just one example here of a person who followed the Lord's inspiration, Mark. Uh, I looked up a little bit about him on the internet, uh, and he was por apparently born in the year 12. So he was about 12 years younger than Jesus. And so when Jesus began his public life in, 19, in year 30, Mark was about 18 years old, probably one of the very young folks, but he wasn't the apostle. He wasn't an apostle, but he was apparently a follower of Christ. And uh, the other thing that was very interesting is it be, the reason I'm giving this is because it's coming from the Coptic church. As you probably know, there are probably about 21 different groups in the Catholic Church throughout the world, uh, or you can use the word rite, R-I-T-E. They celebrate the seven sacraments, they have the fullness of, the, of all the sacraments and everything, but it comes out of a different cultural background. So they're, the way they celebrate the sacraments, for instance, some, some parts of the world they would celebrate the Eucharist sitting down, uh, you know, just gathered around a table. And, and because that's the way they eat their, their meals there, as they're sitting down. So uh, anyway, Mark was born, according to the, the Coptic Church, which is the Coptic rite of the Catholic Church, and it's headquartered in Egypt right now. Um, that apparently, Mark was born in Libya, which I thought he was born in Jerusalem. But it says, the Coptic Church says that they have information that says he was born in Libya. Now, however he got to Jerusalem, I don't know. But he was a Jewish person born in Libya because the Jews were all over the Middle East at that time. If you remember, 300 years before that, uh, a, a, 
king came from what we would today call Macedonia, and he conquered all over the Middle East there and brought the Greek language to the Middle East. So the Jews, I'm sorry, I need to go back 600 years before Jesus because that was the Babylonian exile when the Jews were driven out of Jerusalem because they had not been following God's law. So uh, they were dispersed all over the Middle East after that ex exile. Some of the people continued to live in what I mentioned as the, 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 the country today is Iraq. But they were all over the Middle East, all around the Mediterranean because of that dispersion and their uh, exile. So I can see that he would have probably, his, gener his uh, ancestors were settled in Libya. And uh, he was born in Libya, but he ended up going back to Jerusalem. So anyway, that's where he heard about Jesus Christ, began to follow Jesus. But after Jesus died, apparently Mark followed Peter. And Peter goes to, ultimately ends up in Rome where he becomes a martyr himself in the, in the 60s, the year 60, I think around 63, 65, somewhere in there. So what we have in the Gospel of Mark, according to the scripture scholars, is what pre Peter was preaching. Peter the Apostle was preaching this in Rome and right, Mark is sitting there listening to all of his homilies or his sermons and writing down important stuff. So that's what the scripture scholar is saying is Mark's gospel is what he heard Peter preaching. And then later on, apparently, Mark goes to Egypt and he becomes one of the founding fathers of the church, the Christian church, the Catholic church in Egypt. And it's headquartered in Alexandria. So that becomes one of the, through the centuries, that becomes one of the very important centers of Christianity, Alexandria, and uh, Rome, and a couple of other places in the Middle East. But anyway, Mark was the founder of the church, ultimately, in what we today would call Egypt, in the city of Alexandria. And there's still a, an important source of uh, Christian practice there amidst the Muslims. So we're celebrating this day of Mark, who was ultimately, uh, according to the Coptic people there, the people that lived in that for the centuries down there in the city of Alexandria, Mark was, became a martyr there because they dragged him through the streets trying to kill him because this was in the year 68. So Mark is about 56 years old and they, the center of the church there. And so they, people that were against Christianity, you know, captured him and dragged him through the street until he died. So he became a martyr for not, re, not denying Jesus. So we're celebrating this great feast day of this man who followed Jesus. And this is another example of, as, as the psalm says, forever I will sing the goodness of the Lord. This is a gift from the Lord, not only to Mark, his desire to follow Jesus and then ultimately follow Jesus through Peter and Peter's preaching, but it's a gift to us. How many people have been affected down through the centuries by reading Mark's gospel? changed their lives. You know, we, four Gospels are the most important books in the Bible, but Mark wrote one of them, preaching, teaching of Peter. And so uh, lots of people have been affected by this truth. This man who followed Jesus, he had a mission. We have a mission. We're baptized people. We are called to sp spread and promote the truth of Jesus Christ ourselves. Who knows how many people we affect if we live the Christian faith correctly, to the best of our ability. We're not saints yet, but we're in the process. So as we live our faithful, our Christian following Jesus Christ to the best of our ability, people are affected by that. And we'll find out later. We might even greatly surprise who is affected by the way I lived or the way you lived. We'll find out later when we get to heaven, which is God's plan for us. Mark's up there celebrating now because he was faithful. We're going to be there because we're going to be faithful. And we're probably going to ask Mark's prayers for us today, that he continues to pray for the church in the world today.
Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age, says the Lord. Hallelujah.